Hello everyone, welcome to Sat classes. So in this video, we are going to study Lens Maker formula, which is a very important topic of class 12th and mostly the numericals and the derivations are asked in the examination. So before starting the video, we are going to use two pre-derived formula while proving the Lens Maker formula. So those two formulas I have already derived in the videos, in the previous videos with the name of part one and part two of the refraction with the convex spherical surfaces. So if you haven't watched those videos, please I suggest to watch these videos. The descriptions of those two videos, part one and part two, I have given in the description box. And also you can go with the I and click on the I button to go on to those videos. Okay. So let's start our lens maker formula. So the lens maker formula is basically a formula in which we create a relationship, we establish a relationship between the refractive index, the two radius of curvatures R1 and R2 and the focal length. I have also put the timestamp in the description box. If you want to go to the derivation part, just click that button. You can go directly go to the de derivation part. If you want to see the animation of the ray diagrams, so you can just click on the timestamps. Before starting, just subscribe the channel Sat Classes and please share it with your friends. If you like the video, just give it a thumbs up. Let's get started. In the video, I have to take few assumptions. Let's look at those assumptions first. The first assumption is this. The object which I am taking is a point size object. Okay, so it's not a very big object. The second assumption is very interesting. The second assumption is very important that the lens, the thickness of the lens is very thick, thin. Okay, so it's not that it's a very thick lens, so it is very thin because all the distance which I'm going to measure are from the optical center. So I have to neglect those extra, extra length. Okay, the extra distance covered by the lens, I have to ignore that. And the third assumption is the aperture, the height of the lens is small. And the fourth assumption I have to take is all the rays are paraxial rays that they are pass that they are almost parallel because the angle formed by them are very small. These four assumptions, um, these uh, three assumptions, four assumptions I have already talked about in my pre part one and part two videos. So let's get move on to the ray diagram of the lens maker formula with the help of animation. So I have taken a lens with the aperture a b. The refractive index of my lens is mu two, which is made up of glass. Let it be. And surrounding it is my rarer medium, let it be air, and the, with a refractive index mu1. P is my optical center. The thin lens you know, thing is that if the lens is very broad or very wide, so this uh, lens I can't ignore. But if the lens is very thin, so I can ignore this lens, the blue lens I can ignore, and all the distance I can measure from the point P. So I can ignore a very minute distance. So that's why the lens is taken to be assumed to be thin. Okay. So now let's see. So these are the two center of curvature. For example, this for this curved surface in the center is C1, center of curvature is C1. And let the radius of this curved surface is different. So there, therefore the center or the distance will be different. Let it be C2. So the distance between optical center and C1 is R1 and distance from optical center P to C2 is R2. So R1 is my radius of curvature of my first curved part. R2 is my radius of curvature of the second curved part. I have drawn one normal. C1, N1 is my normal which I have drawn from this point for this curved surface. Okay, This is the radius you can see, this is the line and another another thing I will take my object on this side. So object I have taken here and I have marked with O. A ray of light emitting from the object hit this surface. When it hits the surface it going from rare medium to a denser medium. So the, uh, after the normal is there, so it will make an angle A. So it is going and hitting at this point A. Now, if my medium is uh, not changed, that means if, if it remains rarer, so light will go straight. But we know that if a light goes from a rare to a denser medium, it bends towards the normal. So my light ray will bend slightly bends towards the normal. Can you see the purple line? It is bent towards the normal. It hasn't gone uh, straight, but it bends towards the normal due to the difference of the medium. Now, at this, now what happens if there is no medium change because the light is exiting? So if there is no medium change, so if I make a dotted line, if I extend this line, so my my image will be formed at I dash, let it be, because if there is no, no medium change, but the medium is changed now. So this is not the original path of my light that it will follow. Now next thing, I will draw another normal from C2, let it be N2. Now for, I will draw the actual refraction at this point now. Now my light is going from a denser medium to a rare medium, so it bends away from the normal that it be, that means it move away from the normal and in this case it move away can you see the red light it is moving away from the normal it has to go straight but it moves away from the normal 
and my final image is formed at angle i. So this thing I have to remember why I have taken this i dash and why I have taken this i. i dash is the image which is formed for with the first surface with the first refraction. Okay. Now another ray I have to take because a ray because an image is formed when there are two minimum two rays. So another ray I have taken which is emitting from O and passing through optical center and cutting my image at I. So my image is formed, my final image is formed at I. My final image is formed at I. So now let's move on to the derivation where we are going to see and drive the lens makers formula. Let's start with the derivation of lens maker formula. Before starting, there are some assumptions that we have to consider. The first thing that we have to check is the Cartesian system. So we measure all the distances from pole position. This thing we have already taken into the video number one and two, where the light is going from a rare to the denser medium and denser to the rarer medium. Now we will measure all the distance from this position pole. The next thing that we have to consider that the direction in which my incidence light is going. For example, if the incidence light is going from left to right, if I am measuring the distance u, so it has to be measured from my object is there, the distance is u. So it will be taken as negative because I am measuring from P and it is opposite to the direction of incident ray. If my object, if my image is at I and the distance will be V. So my distance V I measure from pole and it is in the same direction of the incident ray. So it will be taken as positive. So this thing we have to take into account. But all the formula that we have derived, it has already been taken care of. Please check the description box for those links of video number one and two. So it's my request that you must go through those videos first before attempting the lens maker formula because we are going to use the formulas directly for the derivation. The next assumption that we are going to see in this assumption in this derivation is the lens which I am taking is very thin lens. So this formula is valid only for, for those lens which are very thin, not very broad, very thin lens form. The next thing, the object is a point of that I have considered. It's not very big object, it's just a point object. The third, the aperture of the lens is small. That means the height is small. All rays are paraxial. That means the if the rays are paraxial, they are making the small angle with the pole position. That thing we, I have also talked about in the part one and part two of this video. So now let's start with the derivation of lens maker's formula. So starting, let me write down the two equations in where the light rays are going from rare medium to the denser medium and denser medium to the this is the formula that I have already derived when the light rays goes from a rare medium into the denser medium. Now let me get, get back to the diagram again. So this part is having a curvature R2 and this part is having a curvature R1. So this thing that I have taken. So since my light is now my first object is there and the object distance are measured from P. So this distance will be U. Okay. This distance I have take U. Now my light ray is going in this direction and hitting this curved surface first. So the radius which I have to consider is R1 because R1 is the radius of, radius of curvature. So that's why I have written R1 and my light ray is deflecting. If there is no medium after that, for example, this medium I am also considering to be a denser medium. So my image will be formed at I dash. So my image distance will be let me call it as v1. Let my first image distance will be v1. So my formula will be transformed into now in place of u, in place of u, I will write down u only. But in place of v, I have to write down v1 because my image is formed at i dash. Just take care of this thing. Now I will replace my formula. It will become mu2 upon v. Now v is v1, mu2 upon v1 minus mu1 upon u equal to mu2 minus mu1 divided by r1. Let me call this formula as, let me call this equation as equation number 1. Now I will write down the equation in which the light is going from the denser medium to the rare medium. Now I have written the formula when the light ray is going from a denser medium to rare medium. Since my first image is formed at i dash, so my image distance will be delay. Okay, This I have given the name as v1 already and the object distance I have given this name as u. Now what happens since in my second equation so this will be I will treat i dash as my point of object. 
so my distance at which my object is placed in the second case so u will become v1 in place of u i am writing v1 just because now my object is this virtual object okay because in case one i have already mentioned that images from there now this image will be act as the source in the second case okay so my light is going there and the image is formed at i the final image at i and let me call this as distance v it is formed at a distance v so in place of in place of v the final image let me write as e v only so i dash so the v1 is the object which i have placed and it is the imaginary object and my final image is formed at v and the refraction is taking place on the on this curvature which is the r2 so i have to consider r2 here my equation will be transformed as follows i will write in place of mu2 it will be mu2 only in place of u i will write down v1 minus mu1 upon v equal to mu2 minus mu1 upon r2 let me call this as equation number 2 now please see that i want to use these two equations and if i can see these two terms are coming in equation number 1 and in equation number 2 so i want to eliminate these terms how i can eliminate so we will subtract equation number 2 from equation number 1 so if we are going to subtract it we will write it as mu2 upon v1 minus mu1 upon u minus mu2 upon v1 plus mu1 upon v equal to mu2 minus mu1 upon r1 minus mu2 minus mu1 upon r2 after solving it further so these two terms will be cancelled out mu2 upon v1 and mu2 upon v1 this will be cancelled out and i can write it as mu1 upon v minus mu1 upon u equal to mu2 minus mu1 will come out as a common and we will get it 1 upon r1 minus 1 upon r2 now if i take mu1 common from here take out mu1 common it will be 1 upon v minus 1 upon u equal to mu2 minus mu1 bracket 1 upon r1 minus 1 upon r2 let me use this space also so i will bring this mu1 down and it the formula which i will get 1 upon v minus 1 upon u equal to mu2 minus mu1 upon mu1 and in the bracket i will get 1 upon r1 minus 1 upon r2 now this formula i will get so i will use one more i will use one more logic here we have learned that if my object is at infinity if my object is at infinity the image is formed at focus that we have done in our ray diagram so in place of u i will write down infinity and in place of v i will replace it is replace it with f so let's put these value so 1 upon v will become 1 upon f and 1 upon infinity minus 1 upon infinity equal to mu2 minus mu1 upon mu1 bracket 1 upon r1 minus 1 upon r2 so it i will get 1 upon f equal to mu2 minus mu1 upon mu1 and in the bracket it will be 1 upon r1 minus 1 upon r2 if i come these two equations equation number 3 and equation number 4 if i compare these two equations so the rhs sides are equal on comparing these two equations i will see that the rhs sides are equal so you can write on comparing on comparing equation 3 and 4 after comparing these two equations i will get a very important result that is 1 upon v minus 1 upon u is equal to 1 upon f this is the lens formula general lens thin lens formula you can say this is a thin lens formula that we have already studied in class 10 but in class 12 we are in the derivation now for the what we can do i can use the formula for the focal length of the lens i will write the formula again 1 upon f equal to mu2 minus mu1 upon mu1 bracket close 1 upon r1 minus 1 upon r2 this is the same equation number 4 i have written it again now let my air 
mu1 is my rear medium which is air so let mu1 will be equal to 1 okay because if the medium is air let mu2 is my glass i can write mu in place of glass if my other medium is a glass i will get the more generalized formula it will be mu minus 1 bracket close 1 upon r1 minus 1 upon r2 so this is the lens maker formula that we are going to use and this formula is used when we are making the lens for the specs and it is used by the optician so this is the derivation of lens maker formula which gives the relationship between u object distance v image distance and focal length which is f i hope you like the video please subscribe the channel keep watching start classes